Hi friends! Today we are going to read Miss Frog's New Hat, written by Shanti Miller and illustrated by Jordan Taylor. Oh my, said Miss Rabbit as she stepped outside into the bright warm sunlight. What a beautiful day it is! The birds were chirping their lovely songs and bees buzzed over a field of yellow daffodils near her house. Isn't it a beautiful day? She called out to her neighbor, Miss Frog, who was hopping down the dirt path toward her. She was wearing a floppy hat on her head that almost covered her entire face. It was yellow and so bright, it made the sun jealous. The hat was enormous and extravagant, and Miss Rabbit wondered how Miss Frog could tell if she were coming or going. A beautiful day it is, it is, a beautiful day it is, replied Miss Frog. I love your hat, said Miss Rabbit. It must be new. A gigantic grin spread across Miss Frog's face. A new hat, yes, it is, it is, a new hat, yes, it is. It is very lovely. I have never seen one quite like it. Miss Rabbit tapped her furry paw against her chin and gazed across the yard. I think we should have a picnic. You are wearing the perfect hat to dine al fresco. I can even bake my world famous chocolate carrot cake with green leaf frosting. Miss Frog clasped her web fingers together. I will make my specialty fry dipping chips. Mm -mm, I can taste it already. They took a seat on a log near the pond to discuss the details of their picnic when suddenly, on this lovely day, a gust of wind blew. It swirled through the trees, rumpled the delicate petals of the daffodils, and snatched Miss Frog's hat right from atop her little green head. she yelled, grasping at the air. My new hat, there it goes, it goes, my new hat, there it goes. Please, Miss Rabbit, help me get it back. She cried as she took off after the airborne hat. Anything for a friend, replied Miss Rabbit as she also gave chase. Through the tall oak trees, the yellow hat blew, nearly knocking Beatrice Bird out of her nest. as she smoothed down her ruffled feathers. My new hat is what it was, it was. My new hat is what it was, cried Miss Frog. Will you help us get it back? Anything for a friend, Beatrice said as she flew off after the runaway hat with Miss Frog and Miss Rabbit not far behind. Across a lake and over a meadow, the yellow hat blew, hitting a pile of dirt and dumping it right into Melvin Moe's freshly dug hole. What is going on up there? He hollered, peeping his head out of his hole. I've been digging since dawn, and now all my hard work has been ruined. I'm so sorry, Miss Frog apologized. We are in pursuit of a very elusive hat. Will you help us get it back? You don't have to ask me twice, Melvin Mole replied. Anything for a friend. He cleaned the dirt from his glasses and took off after the hat with Beatrice Bird, Miss Rabbit, and Miss Frog in tow. Beyond the clouds and above the hills, the hat blew, floating on the currents of the wind until it disappeared out of sight. Do you see it, Beatrice? Do you see my yellow hat? Huffed a very exhausted Miss Frog. The feathers on the back of Beatrice's neck stood straight. Ah, uh, it blew into that deep, dark cave over there, she pointed. It 
looks frightening and very, very dark inside. I have heard that only the most ferocious and fearless animals live in caves. Miss Rabbit gulped. Who, who wants to go in first? Well, it certainly can't be me, said Melvin Mole. My vision is extremely poor. I will not be able to see a thing. How about we all go in together, suggested Miss Frog. Splendid idea, said Melvin. I was just going to suggest that. Ladies first, of course. Just as they had gathered enough courage to enter the cave, they heard a rumble, and then a grumble, and then a Out of the cave appeared Bert Bear. His face was locked into a frown as he rubbed the top of his head with one paw, and in the other paw, clutched firmly, was Miss Frog's hat. My hat! Miss Frog shrieked. You caught it! Yes, you did! You did! You caught it! Yes, you did! This hat belongs to you, grumbled Bert Bear. I was fast asleep in my lair when the flu and sob struck me on the head. Yep, that's Miss Frog's hat, Melvin Mole confirmed. I can guarantee that you will never see a mole wearing a hat. No, sir. It is just not in our nature. Besides, yellow is not my color. Everybody knows us moles prefer a rich, deep brown. Miss Frog hopped forward. I do apologize, Mr. Birdbeard, sir. You see, I was chatting with my friend, Miss Rabbit, when a gust of wind took my hat right off the top of my green head. I have never had such a thing happen to me before. We have been chasing it all day long, through the trees, across the lake, over the meadow, above the hills, and now into your cave. We did not mean to disturb you. Do you think I can have my hat back, and then we will be on our way? She asked. Bert Bear let out a sigh, the loud, rumbly kind only a bear could make. Anything for a friend. He dusted off the hat and handed it over to an incredibly happy Miss Frog. You are the best, Bert, said Miss Frog as she placed her big yellow hat firmly back on her head. All right, hollered Miss Rabbit. Everyone is invited back to my house for dinner. On this interesting day, I am sure none of us will soon forget. They made the journey back to Miss Rabbit's house, where they munched on chocolate carrot cake with greenly frosting, fly dip and chips, honey tea and salmon, and earthworm covered mud pies. Thank you, everyone, for helping me get my hat back, said Miss Frog. Good friends you are, indeed, indeed. Good friends you are, indeed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, everyone.